This is Stephanie, and this is the Mocha Minutes Podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I just wanted to let you know about something that's a little new here at the Mocha Menace Podcast. We are now participating in Buy Me a Coffee. So if you haven't heard, buymeacoffee.com is a place where you can show some um, support and some love monetarily to some of your favorite content creators. That includes me. (laughs) Um, So... It's in the increments of either a dollar, three dollars, or five dollars, and you can do as many as you would like. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know, would love, love, love some support. So if you would go to buymeacoffee.com backslash mocha minutes, I would greatly appreciate it. It will also be in the show notes. Okay, here we go. The 22nd of loneliness. And we've been through so many things. I love my man with all honesty, but I know he's cheating on me. I look him in his eyes, but all he tells me is lies to keep me near. I'll never leave him down, though I might mess around. It's only because I need some affection. So I creep. Yeah, I just keep it on the down low. Said nobody else supposed to know. So I creep. Yeah, cause he doesn't know what I do and no attention goes to show. So I creep. Um, welcome to the Mocha Men's Podcast. Let me tell y'all something, AZ lyrics. I'm a whole black lady over a certain age. And I feel some sort of way that whatever interns y'all got, I'm looking at this like, said, I'm going to Urban Dictionary. I can't. What? I need y'all to tell me where the urban lyrics um sites are so I can get the urban songs. Cause I'm like, I feel like these aren't the words. But I'ma just keep it going. <laughs> I'm I'm I'ma just keep it going. But y'all, welcome back to the Book of This Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm joined by my girl. Uh my my, my she is my main squeeze, not y'all's. Mine. <laughs> okay. Don't even get no ideas. Do not DM me. You're like, bye. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> no, no. My main squeeze, I have huh. Dr. Thane, who is, you know, in Mexico. And in I'm Mexico. like envious of the um the beauty. And also I have found myself checking my own toilet for lizards, and I'm not exactly <laughs> sure why. It's like, what? I've but had some like, adventures. I've had some adventures like, since I've been here. Right. And I'm like, I gotta look. It's like, Aventuras. You, you don't have any lizards here. I'm like, yeah, but you know. The thing is, it's not that it was like a, li- like I lived in Houston. Sometimes you get a cockroach in your toilet or like a spider uh, or something like that. And you're just like, spiders, ew, gross, yeah. flush, right? You know, hey. even a little lizard, it would have been like, okay, little lizard, like how'd you get in there, bro? This hey, thing buddy. was a good 10 inches long from tip to tail. What? It was a substantial lizard. And we got him out. He's all okay. safe and alive and shit. But for two Life days, <laughs> it was stressful while we tried to figure out what we were supposed to do. And you don't know how he got in there. Well, there's a couple different ways. Um, I went down the rabbit hole mm. uh, on the internet. And I was like, what oh, happens nice. when you get a toilet lizard? And evidently all the toilet lizard videos come from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> like none of the toilet lizard videos came from Mexico or South America in any way, shape, or form. Even though this is where people are like, mm-hmm. "Oh yeah, I expected that to happen." Mm-hmm. I was like, "No, Florida." So Florida was who taught me what happened. Is that you know how you have all these pipes above on your roof and shit? Yeah, yeah. And you're supposed to put caps on them, like little mm-hmm. shower caps. And people mm-hmm. don't always do that. Mm-hmm. So if they're chilling upstairs and they're like, "Hey." I want to get out of this heat. They could just whoop down into your little pipe and then they're just in your plumbing. And so they can swim. If you have multiple toilets in your house, they can go from toilet to toilet 
just by going through your house and shit like that, just because they came through an upstairs, like a up above your roof pipe. So you're supposed to put those little caps on top of it so they don't get down in there. That also keeps like from bugs from going in there and shit like that too. Uh, and the other thing is just like, he could, if the toilet was open, which it wasn't, because we have cats, we always have our toilet seat down and closed. Um, mm-hmm. Cause that was my first thought. I'm like, maybe he could have just climbed in. Yeah, yeah. Or fell in or something mm-hmm. like that or whatever. But mm-hmm. the problem is he couldn't get out because mm-hmm. the shape of the toilet and the porcelain, like he couldn't get up it. So we oh. put a stick, basically a broom handle in the toilet, wrapped it in a mm-hmm. towel. He, he t- used that as grip. He got out, he <laughs> ran into the shower and then tree scooped him up into a bucket and took him outside. But he was not tiny. Oh he was like, huge. Now I got to look and I'm like, wait a minute, you don't have a problem with lizards. Oh. Not in Maryland, you shouldn't have a problem with lizards. At most, it would be maybe Like, you might spider. open it up and a crab might pop up and be like, what's up? Right. That'd be hilarious. I, I, it would be, because I literally would be like, yeah, I need some, like, cheap beer and <laughs> some crab seasoning. We're going to get this shit going. It was stressful because we thought flushing them was going to do the job because we figured like he always he obviously got through the pummeling so he'll just get back out right. and he was gone for a little while so we went back to the bat we started using the bathroom again i mean i took the next morning i took a morning shit and that afternoon he showed back up and i was like oh shit i actually was there and he could have popped up at any time and so that freaked me out and so yeah that's why we got online and we found out about the broomstick trip broomstick? We put a broomstick inside the toilet with the towel so he could climb up it. Oh. Oh, okay. Because he can't climb up the porcelain. Mm. Oh. Yeah, that's how we got him out. Oh, oh. But that you was... You have a lizard in your, in, in your toilet. Get a I was seven days or eight days into my trip. So that was my, oh. my first Merida Aventura. Mm. Um, since then, I've had like two ant explosions and they're gone within hours. They like swarm your house a one wall in your house for like two hours and then they just fucking bounce when they were done they were just like it was raining outside so they just came in and then they just left that's happened twice um yeah you know Mm. you'll be walking you just be sitting there and a iguana will jump out of a tree But it still sounds fun though. It still sounds, sounds like I love movie. it. I'm, I'm like, not complaining. I'm not complaining. It's just, you know, you don't have squirrels out here. You have iguanas. So like you'd be walking down the street and legit like a 20 inch iguana will just walk past you. And you're like, all right, I guess. Okay. okay this is, I'm like, okay, I guess this is normal. Yeah. I went to I a guess. zoo. And there was a, I was in a hippo exhibit or looking at the hippos. And then mm-hmm. this iguana was just chilling. And I was like, are you part of the exhibit or and then he just walked through the fence and i was like man those those animals must be pissed just watching these these iguanas like, going in and oh, out you of just enclosures can be free and shit you, you like, can just do whatever the fuck here. you want because they're not small like they're not small so we're like three feet being the white people of animals like i'm just gonna lie. <laughs> Sucks I'll go where you. I want. <laughs> yeah I, I do and they'll be like they'll have like a missing hand or half a tail and they're just still like white privilege they just they just they live their life hmm. um i've seen a oh. dog on a roof why was the dog on the roof i have no idea um maybe he saw an iguana <laughs> maybe he saw an iguana he's like let me just know. get out of here let me just I get, do here not know. get away from them i was asleep yesterday and i was like what is that what, what is that i'm hearing a literal donkey was uh, uh, like i don't know how far away it was from my house but like i could hear him yaying or whatever it is that they call that thing um, brain. is it brain brain that's what it was i couldn't think of the word i couldn't like, think of the word yaying i'm like yaying he was yaying yeah it's it, but it's been fun um you know i got my pool i got my hammock yeah um, like she got, looks like she's living her rich auntie life in this in these pictures of hammocks it has in like, only two months so it has relaxing. ruined my be- well not i didn't not that i had the be- i did not have this belief because i'm a brown person from america of course i didn't have this belief <laughs> but you do think that this is how life is you know you're mm. you're in america you just think this is how life is and there's no options for us as brown people like we're just gonna be this way mm. and then you come to another brown country and mm. it's it is more affordable so there is that um mm. so i mean you are you're kind of guilty of gentrifying to a degree um 
because of that. And you are raising the prices for the account, the local economy and stuff like that. But uh, black and brown folks that come down here are like trying to actively participate in the culture and stuff like mm-hmm. that, which is different than the white expats that are here. Um, and like you're here and you're like, you mean I'm not, I don't have to be paycheck to paycheck. I can actually have a really nice house. Like I have a three bedroom, three bath house right now with a pool and a private fenced off yard that I can't see any neighbors. I don't have any neighbors immediately near me, but there's construction mm-hmm. around me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I could be butt ass naked in my backyard, laying out, being in my pool and no one could see me. Um, that sounds amazing right now. I could walk down the street and get tacos. Like literally I could walk within five minutes of my house in any direction and I will find tacos. That's such an so. amazing life right now. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> my, like, what's happened? My life would be so great with like literally some fish or shrimp tacos right now. I I can't even I can't even begin to tell you like how much it's already have impacted me as like the way the what's stressing me out right now is just that I'm not fluent in Spanish and that I'm okay. You know, there's moments when it's tough that, but but it's no more tough than if I were to travel anyway. Yeah, you know, if I was just on vacation, so I'm not mm-hmm. experiencing. I have Google translate at the end of the day, you know, like Mm -hmm. if like I had an issue today, I was trying to get water from a place and the guy didn't understand if I was returning the water because you got to get these big water things. If I was returning a bottle and Mm -hmm. taking a new one. And so I had to go to the Google translate real quick. And I was just like, I thought I had the right thing, but I wasn't confident. So I didn't say it. And then I Googled it and I was like, Oh, actually I didn't know what to say. Mm. Um, And so when I said that, he was like, Oh, okay. And then at that point we were fine, you know? So that's like the most stressed I am right now. Mm. Um, if life is jumping up and bite me, I go lay, I go in the pool or I go lay on my hammock mm. and I chill the fuck out. That's so, um, sounds- so I'm here to, t- to tell all the black people. <laughs> Clearly, because I'm like, well, I mean- plus in Medida, I mean, the reason why I chose Medida is because it's the high, it's one of the highest populations of black expats um, mm-hmm. okay. from, from the U.S., and uh, in particular, all the all the groups, all the black women, whether they were single with families, not with families, whatever, were like, this is where we come. This is where we're safe. This is where we're comfortable. And you know me, I'm going to listen to what black women say. <laughs> so. She do be listening. I'm just going to let y'all know. She be listening to us. She like, I'm sorry, what the black lady say? So um, what they you say? Know, like, like Becky can be out here with her little TikTok and be like, "Here's my day in Medida. I started out with blah blah blah, and then you know, da-da. they can say all that shit all they want. That's fine." Oh, you know it. You are gonna watch some little white girl say, "I am taking back my my maid who hasn't been back in her country." In you know what I'm saying? Like country. exactly. Uh, where here it's like we just adapt to what the Mexicans do. Like Mexicans will literally like you'll be walking outside. And it's like six o'clock at night and the abuelas, that's where they take their little chairs and go outside. The abuel- okay. abuelas bring their chairs and put it out front okay. and they're just on the sidewalks. So that when you walk down the street, you are going to stop and chat with the abuela. She's not your abuela, but she's going to be your abuela for the next 15 minutes because you're going to sit there and talk to her. Please take care of me. <laughs> and they take like they take care of their old people out here. Um, mm-hmm. And so you just walk down the street and you're like, buenas noches. And they're like, you know, how are you doing? You're like, how are you doing? We, you end up saying, I don't really speak Spanish that well. And they say, okay. And then they're like, you hungry? Um, you can just go to people. Like people will just invite you over mm-hmm. to eat or they'll have a, like a kind of a restaurant in their house and be like, come on in. This is, you will eat here at the table with the family. Um, and the, the black expats end up doing it too. I've been invited. I ain't gone anywhere yet. I've been invited to so many houses already. Like, oh, you can just come over and go to the pool. Yeah, and I'm like, don't, like you wanna, don't you want to? Don't you want to meet at the taco stand first? You know, know? <laughs> like they're like, no, just come over. Um, so yeah, it's I'm. If you can amazing. work remote, if you can work remote, mm-hmm. there is no reason for you to pay the rent that you pay. <laughs> Especially if it's like it's a hundred percent remote. Yeah, if you're 100 like, remote, was, get your like, ass out here. That's uh, that sounds. Let uh, me tell you, we're in Medida, we're in Costa Rica, we're in Uruguay, we're in Paraguay, we're in Honduras. We're we're out here. We're out we here. Ouchie. So, um, come on, that, come I'm, on. I'm glad this has been, you know, 
um toilet lizards ant bombs the worst you might have to deal is like every now and then you get a toilet lizard right but she's like yeah i would take an ant bomb and a toilet lizard over what i had before i'm i'm mad chill about having a toilet lizard like if that was the worst thing that could happen yes girl i'm like i'll take you know because you know why because i could get it out I, we found a way and like, now that like, we know now that you know it's like oh it'll be easier the next time I right have one. so that was when we were closer to the city we're further out now so i'm expecting more critters because mm-hmm. we're, you know, we're further out where there's construction and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So we're definitely getting like some bugs and shit. I said tarantulas in my pool. Oh yeah, I forgot about my pool tarantulas. Um, I had pool tarantulas <laughs> a couple last week. Like, I was like, what are these? Um, they were just floating and I went to scoop them out thinking like they died. Small. Yeah, they were like baby tarantulas. I mean. Oh, and they died? No, I thought they were dead. I thought they were, flo- I thought that I was like, damn, these two big ass spiders are just dead in my pool. And then I go to scoop them out with the scooper and yeah, the. He starts walking around. And I was like, oh, shit. So I dropped him back in because I was like, I don't know what kind of spider these are. I don't like to kill spiders because spiders are usually good for you. Like mm-hmm. they'll eat the shit that tries to eat you and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But I need to know that if it bites me or my cats, I'm not going to the hospital. So I left them in the pool. Oh, <laughs> and I took a video of them and I sent them to this uh, etymologist that I used to work with. I used to work with this bug doctor oh, at this Lord. agricultural company 20 years ago what when we're still Facebook friends. So I was like, I was like, Des, I need you to identify this this animal for me and he's like i think it's a wolf spider and i'm like but he's a little bit hairier than a wolf spider you know than like a female wolf spider because those can get quite big i was like it's a little bit hairier though and he's like i'm not really the spider guy but i do know a spider lady so he sent it on to an arachnologist and then me so i'm in this group chat in in the dms of facebook with this etymologist that i used to be friends with back in 20 years ago when we used to work together and his arachnologist friend um their center talking about the next time they're going to get together for a picnic or some shit while at the same time giving me information about what to do about these tarantulas which was what they turned out to be so i probably had a tarantula egg sac hatch like a month or two beforehand which is why they were oh. the size that they were so i finally got them at the pool took them put them in the backyard because they couldn't kill me tarantulas don't kill tarantulas tarantulas are good for you um, mm. they can bite your pets and they can make your pets sick for a minute, but like they won't kill your pets. So I'm still cautious. If I see them, I'm gonna take them away. But mm. I'm if they're in the backyard, I don't mind that they're in the backyard. Um, mm. they kill mosquitoes, they kill the bugs that that want to hurt you. Um, but one of them just mm. chilled and one of them ran off, and I could hear him run, like I can hear the leaves rustling when he ran away. Cause I don't know how long he'd been in that pool. Cause by the time I showed up and saw him, he could have been there all night because they're nighttime animals. But I saw him during the day, and then I Not left him in there during the day. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Oh, Still. we get bats. We get all kinds of shit. So you know, if you just don't freak out about the animal kingdom, which I really don't. I, you know, I'm just like, you know, bats be bad. Very chill about this. Like y'all don't see her face. She's very much like, oh yeah. By the way, there was a lizard in my toilet, and there was a ranch in the pool. I'm oh. Like, there's no. I'm non like, about like, the bugs. Yeah. Hella non chain. So the ones that will give me the be, it's opposite than Stephanie, because Stephanie's like, I'm sorry. If I, I see a cockroach, cockroach, I will fall apart. I don't like cockroaches. So oh, I don't Houston and mm-hmm. Texas was really hard for me. There are some here, but they're not we haven't had that many of them. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing, like right now on this window behind me, which is all lit up, mm-hmm. there's a big ass beetle that's about like two inches. He's yeah. just chilling. He's yeah, on the outside. Okay. I was like, I was like, oh no he's creepy looking he's definitely creepy looking but, but he's not like, in the house he he's outside. not in the house like, he's oh, on the okay. outside of the house i mean i looked at him i was like oh and then i'm like oh you're inside or you're outside you're fine yeah, like okay um, wait yeah you're so not I'll, in my house i'll squeal a little but, but my immediate thing it. isn't kill it kill it unless i can identify that it'll hurt me mm. if i can identify it'll hurt me i'll kill it okay um and since cockroaches can hurt everybody um yeah death to all cockroaches yeah so yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty chill about them. And, you know, I do prefer animals to people anyway. So if I have to have a toilet lizard, a couple of pool tarantulas and um, and some ant swarms, <laughs> ant swarms. <laughs> that go away in an hour. Yeah, because I had one yesterday and they were gone. They were Mom, gone in like an hour. Make me say, that's like, it has nothing to do with ants. <laughs> okay. I, don't know why so... I think they're coming in from the moisture. I got geckos, too geckos you just let them live they're fine 
they're hella cute oh my god they're hella cute they're so but they're cute. like all over the house like you'll just be in the bathroom and one will just scurry past and you're just like what's up geico you know it's fine they're very cute okay they so got big old eyes and shit little bodies they're adorable i cannot believe i'm about to say this because and i know my buddy kendrick from reality comics too because he told me about this he said i think it's a good watch he's like it's better so i am i was very much like a anti snyder cut of justice league solely because of the two and a half hours that i could not get back for ww84 or the original justice league i was like you already gave you already gave you time i was just like i will not and then I was very upset by my Bravo shows this week. Two reunions literally got on my goddamn nerves. I'm like, I need mm. a palate cleanser. And I was like, well, can you have, like, wait, somebody- you're using the Snyder cut as a palate cleanse for whatever happened on Bravo this week. I know. Hey, That's bad. how bad Bravo was this week. Yes. Shit. Yeah, exactly. So here's the thing. I'm somebody who likes to fall asleep watching television. I'm like, oh, good. I'm like, I will fall asleep. But then I kept watching the goddamn movie and I'm like, why? I don't know. Cause it's like, they're like I'm out y'all. I'm three fourths through. It's four hours. Literally that's half your work day. If you are Man. able to work from home and work, you could watch the Snyder cut. I'm like, here's a, here's the deal. That three fourths is literally better than the two movies I just mentioned. The original justice league and WWE. Is it? it yeah. I couldn't get past the Wonder Woman scene at the beginning. I got that far in and she said those stupid ass lines and I was like, and and how randomly calm the kids were about being no, I couldn't. I ended I I, I oh, ended like, it. I had to right stay around because my, my boob Joe Morton is in this movie and I'm I, I don't know what it is about this man. He makes everything better when he's in it. And I'm just like and, and the whole time I'm like, Here, this. I know one of the actors personally. And I can't get to even that person's scene. Um, also, I, I won't I, say it. I won't say it on here, but I'll, you won't I'll say tell it on you. here. But I will say I um, I know somebody who went to go see the Flash. She said it wasn't bad. I'm like, yeah, because she asked me did I want to go, and I said, no, I'm not interested. Mm-mm. I'm good. We're, we're not. We're not. We're not supporting even, sex predators. I, I'm not. I'm not doing that. And the bad part about it is, there's so many bad people. But I was like, yeah, no, I'm good. So that was the other reason why I'm like, I don't want to do Snyder Cut with Ezra. But it was kind of like, yeah, Jason Momoa's in here, and still, okay. Now, much as I, I find mean, this man very attractive, I'm sitting here like, I, yeah, I love Jason. Aquaman. He just does not. It does not make sense to me. It does not make sense to me. Yeah, Aquaman I like looking terrible. at his pretty ass, and I'm like, I, I love, love Jason, but it was just I lo- like, I love Henry too. I love, I love, um, I love Snacky Cavill. Okay, Snacky love Cavill. Him. Um, but I, I mm. short of his personality in real life, I actually also like Batfleck. Like, I like correct. Yeah, but he, he, who he's become as a person in the last 20 years I have not enjoyed I did enjoy him a lot more 20 years ago mm-hmm. um but also I didn't hate him as Batfleck but I also like certain other roles that he's played See? so I'm I'm sitting here looking at I like Ben I like Jason I like Henry I also know somebody in the movie I also I cannot stand Gal Gadot though like she's not for me um She's, she's too terrible pick as Wonder Woman. It's just I want to know well, the list she's, of other people that she's anti Palestine and pro Israel in a way because she's it's Hebrew, creepy. so it makes sense. That's her country, that's yeah. her people, and shit like that. But like mm-hmm. that, they had to like try to make soften the whole anti Arab thing that she's got going on for Wonder Woman eighty four. Mm-hmm. I just can't. I can't abide by her as a person. I can't stand her. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. You but know very much. DC attracts some interesting folks, no? Because now I went to go see Shazam, the second one. I don't like that dude either. And it, girl, because like, he's got a pro, he's a problem. Oh, he's definitely a problem. He is tall and fine as I don't know what. However, comma, it's like please stop talking. However, comma. <laughs> <laughs> stop However, talking. comma. <laughs> it's like, and the thing about it is, I went with my brother, and I was like, "You want to see the new Shazam?" He's like, "Not really, but I'll go with you." Because he he didn't like the first one. He I didn't care didn't for like the, first the first one either. One. I'm like, I thought it was out of 
at the time with the DC movies, I'm like, Shazam was the better one. It was the better one. I'll grant out of all that. All the DCs. It I'll was grant like, it. Yeah. Out of them, it was like, like it was at that point, Shazam and the Wonder Woman scene from Batman versus Superman. That's what DC had. For that's me. what they had. And that's fair. And that's fair. <laughs> that's like, I mean, that was it. So I was like, okay, yeah. so I'm going to get the second one. And I was just like, on paper, you got you got the you got the kids, the really cute Faith Herman. That's a little black girl. That's my boo. You had um De- Helen Mirren, Lucy Liu. I love Her- Helen. And so I'm I like, like Lucy. on paper, this should mm-hmm. just be better. And then it mm-hmm. fell into the trap that a lot of DC and or all of them have. They put too many plots in one movie and they do not wrap it up really nice. I see. So I'm like seven did not have to happen in this movie plus what's that dude's name chuck i don't oh, know exactly i know Levi. exactly um, um they, that's not jewish and i'm like let me tell you something jewish talk they are digging in his ass and i'm like, oh yeah they're getting him yeah don't they're getting him fuck that dude i don't blame um him. but that dude wants to be ryan reynolds so bad and he you don't have the charisma because it's like one Ryan's canadian so there's that <laughs> 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 it's like first of all we're canadian so he got you beat but and also, he's actually kind i think i mean i think he, he, the problem like, that ryan has is that he doesn't do well when his woman is successful from what i understand um which so is why him and blake are still together i'm like no that kind of because sense. do you notice what happened with her career though she stepped back yeah and she like all of a sudden it's like they would be on her cover surprise she's pregnant i'm like <laughs> how many is it now yeah um <laughs> And you know, like I'm not in like that's that's just the hearsay stuff. No that's one's it. publicly like, come here. out necessarily said like, it, so like Alanis it is what it is. Want. I'm like Alanis, what really happened there? Girl, you, you know, know what I'm what saying? The fuck happened there? Um, but but like with him, he this guy wants to be him so bad, but it's like you're not as charming, you're not as plucky, and you're not as like known to be kind as Ryan is known to be kind out in the world, like the and way he fun. deals with people and how. And even when he's frustrated and he don't want to do like you know i'm at dinner or i'm this or whatever he's still nice about it he's just like let Again, me live my life he's you know kind of a thing i'm like you're not he's canadian dude like this man like it's yeah. not happening like and he's wait, not gonna ryan, be that he's not gonna is, be that ryan, ryan can barely be ryan so <laughs> like for real like literally like after van wilder any movie that i saw ryan Reynolds in that's all i saw i'm like so van wilder is now a superhero that's why i thought about deadpool he's legit the same guy like he's got the thing he's got the thing that like keanu reeves has where it doesn't matter that he keeps playing keanu reeves he's still really likable and you're always is like literally the sweetest we're gonna stand for keanu whereas the flip of that is Tom Cruise also plays Tom Cruise in every movie but Tom Cruise is terrible as a human and as an actor and nobody wants to see him I'm speaking for everybody when I say this. If anybody wants to do- disagree with me, they're lying and they're wrong. Tom Cruise is horrible. So can we just leave out um, Interview with the Vampire? <laughs> Except for an Interview with the fucking Vampire. Thank you. And Tropic Thunder, which yes. pisses me off that I what? have to sit here and love his character in Tropic Thunder. I'm so mad that he made me laugh in that movie because I hate him so much. Oh, gosh. As no, a human, I did not realize that this was like the anti Cruz hive. I fucking hate that dude. Um, yeah, he's he's awful. He's a horrible, oh, horrible human being. And then he's just bad. terrible at acting. I don't understand why people like him so much. I've I never understood. Really? It. Okay, so here's as someone who is his, is a fan of Tom Cruise, it's literally because he has mastered the impossible white man trope. Like literally, it's like he is the impossible uh, white man. The yeah, impossible he's... white man. I'm like, and there's like, he is like the prototype. I mean, The Rock is king of you know impossible white man movies because you're like, now, yeah, yeah he's why? he's the brown impossible white man. They're like, wait, but how do you say The Rock is an impossible white man? Look at his movies. Look at his alignment. That's true. <sighs> I'm just saying, I'm like, because even though he always has black kids when he plays a dad he never has a black wife because i mean even with the like rampage is about a fucking video game and it was like so we not gonna kiss her fine ass like she right there kiss the- when <laughs> is the caribbean crab to say kiss the girl <laughs> where's she at um you know what other movie i'll give you which again not that i want to hype this dude but legend i love legend i always have loved legend Mm. ever since i was a kid it's also tim curry it's got you know 
it's, it's dope. So but, I still have not seen the new t- Top Gun Maverick. I've not watched that yet. I have not. Either. But I keep making the joke. And I'm like, yeah, everybody who's Tom Cruise fans, and y'all like seeing Top Gun? Absolutely. What is the plot of Top Gun? There is none. Nobody can tell me. They're like, it's flying? a dick Car- showing contest. That's all um, it is. It's, I have a dick. You, you got a dick. Love a feeling. A motorcycle, Tom Cruise, and aviator shapes. Nobody can tell me. Like, what is the plot of um Top Gun? The purpose of Top Gun is so that father-in-laws everywhere can use their surround sound <laughs> that they installed themselves to show you what it sounds like when airplanes take off from one side of the living room <laughs> to the other. That is the plot of Top Gun. I read the point. Maverick's so good. What the hell is the plot of Top Gun? And everybody's like, a uh, plot? I'm like, exactly. It's like, porn. What's the no. porn movie? There's no plot. There's it doesn't no plot. need a plot. Um, oh, I know what the plot is. Fucking. That's ba- I mean, but, barely though. Like it's it's more it's dick very, showing. It's very more dick. It's like there's so much. Okay, y'all, I'm not gonna this is not porn <laughs> critique hour from the aunties, because we have lots to say. Okay. And we haven't so, talked in a while, so we just yeah, I know we we just being bad. Okay. So, We're okay. not doing the regular we not. We just videos. talking, but yeah i yeah i'm three-fourths through with the snyder cut and i'm like y'all could chop this up in two movies and i'd be like not bad i kind of like so here's the thing about justice league so for me i am someone who is and i was in love with the cartoon so of course Mm -hmm. if you have hbo max which is now max it's like okay girl whatever whatever. (laughs) um it's like girl okay so you know justice mama call him cash i'm gonna call him cash (laughs) anyway his mama like what his mama call him that's how i feel it's like girl i guess it's like i'm like so hbo max you mean max yes Mm -hmm. i mean max okay you gotta tell me a child of the 80s that i i can't call this fucking thing hbo no more the home box office Hello. They're like, what would you be? I'm like, y'all, there are some people who don't probably remember what KFC stands for. It's called Kentucky Fried Chicken. And then it switches to KFC. And all of a sudden, like, here in Mexico, it is Kentucky Fried Chicken. Because they don't have that whole branding problem that Kentucky Fried oh. Chicken came across. Oh, right. So, so they're okay. actually Kentucky Fried I'm going to take a picture of it and show it to you so you can see the words oh are written God, all the way out. It's dope. Uh, so here's the thing about Justice League. I'm somebody who likes the Green Lantern character. I liked it too. Most notably, it um, John, John Stewart, Stewart, the black one. I also don't mind Hal Jordan, hence why I didn't necessarily hate Green Lantern. But again, there's a DC movie I didn't that hate had it. literally, what, I'm like, girl, seriously, what the heck? That's the, it's a, again parts. another movie that didn't have a purpose it's like um, i get it where you like you're introducing sinestro but not really and then you really. had this person I'm like what the fuck is he and then, and then you then didn't like, do anything with this? it and i'm like yeah what and then that being said huh. the idea of being able to dream up something to use in real time has always been a huge appeal to the idea of green lantern that's so. why i kind of so when they came with the Justice League movie, I was like, can I get a Green Lantern? <laughs> so I was like, I wasn't on board with Cyborg. I'm like, first of all, I want a black character. It's Green Lantern, but okay. But in the Snyder Cut, it makes me appreciate the Cyborg character mm-hmm. more. And that probably is because I'm seeing more of Joe Morton. So that might be the and his smart ass black mama who got killed in a car accident by by both of your parents fucking doctors okay and she's a visibly <laughs> black woman i'm like you know what and i don't hate ben affleck as batman he's literally not the worst i also watched the batman with the sparkly vampire and now i mean he wasn't the worst either surprisingly i actually um, was kind of impressed with robert as batman i was like huh, like if you Take away like the you know the campy stuff from the other Batman. It's like doesn't it make all sense. And sorry, the the thing. What first of all, still I'm like looking at this still like, crazy, right? Huh? And the crazy there? that he was calling, yeah, wild. It's wild that that was him. I, was, I remember him saying Colin Farrell's in this movie. Like where the hell is he in this movie? And I'm still looking at this character. Like Funny. seriously, I'm like, did you like you put him in a fat suit and put his whole face? I'm like, what is happening? I'm like, I can I did not recognize him at all. Yeah, I'm like 
And I mean, okay. they did interesting stuff with it too, using the hush version of the Riddler, kind of, and you yeah. know, so, you know, kind of. Because it was know, very whatever. much like not the campy. I'm overly more smarter than you. It's just like I'm gonna fuck some shit up. I'm like, yeah. And I mean, to be fair, that's what's fun about the rogues gallery is that they literally are chaos agents and Mm -hmm. Batman. I mean, sue me. Batman's obviously not good enough to stop the chaos because the chaos reigns. It keeps happening all the time. (laughs) I will say I still have not seen Joker. I'm just like, it is weird to look at Joker without Batman, but I've heard. So I haven't seen Joker and I haven't seen Venom. So I have seen Venom. I have seen Joker, but on the plane because okay. I refused to pay for it. And it just happened to okay. be on an airplane. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, it's not Joker. It is a person mm-hmm. who got called. Okay. You're, you're being a Joker. So Robert De Niro's okay. character is like, you're just being a Joker, you know? And okay. so that's how he adopts a name. So he's not an origin story for Joker. He's not a canon Joker by any means. He is okay. literally a um incel white dude who didn't get his way and decided mm-hmm. to fuck shit up that's literally the whole deal with so that do character you think, like them taking this take where it's like it's not like jack napier aka jack nicholson which re-watching 1980s batman is just a very interesting thing it's a I'm different like, experience as a as an like, adult for sure but so like these movies i kind of liked how it was somewhat dark and i saw lewis tan's daddy in this movie because he's in it um so i'm just like it's very interesting to go back and watch these movies and go hmm. plus batman killed in that in those movies <laughs> he ran people over with the batmobile he did all kind of shit in those like movies the actual excitement about the bat um the batmobile I really do think that me and wade need to go back and redo our batman list now because at the time um robert pattinson's movie wasn't out yet mm. so it's just kind of like i don't know how i feel about this i'm like i might have to re um i might have to redo it and actually include ben affleck because i love like i forgot because well well <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean well, like yeah. all these guys playing the role differently is mm-hmm. you know what you what you want you you mm. don't want the same guy you don't want to mimic or anything like that yeah. and and i like the idea of of being a different kind of batman or a different kind of joker or a different mm-hmm. kind of like for what to match whatever the enemy is or whatever um and you know like it it didn't take away from batman in any way shape or form i mean the worst one is george Clooney for me um yeah. because it's just like what are we doing here yeah. uh, and for me but, it's, Val. You know, it's like him and val kilmer is like I'm going to have to read, and mind you, I actually did watch them this weekend, both of them, and I'm like, I, I, I have watched them in the last five years. I don't hate Val Kilmer's version as much as I hate Clooney's version. I um, like- I'm also, it's more the Schumacher problem, the director of those yeah. two. Like, he really, yeah. you know, once you, once you give Batman nipples, everything, everything changes, so I, think I guess. The, I think what doomed Clooney as being the worst on the list is the fact that Arnold Schwarzenegger got top billing in a Batman movie and he was not Batman. It's like, so he already done <laughs> fucked up. Puns. Those <laughs> fucking like, puns are like, so ridiculous. I used to meet you. <sighs> the idea was it to make Mr. Freeze an ex-Olympian who became a <laughs> what? You know what? Because Dr. Freeze is such a good character so to good. make him just a fucking, you know, ice schmuck, I guess, um, was just such a disservice to that character. Because on paper, it's like, it, his, Mr. Freeze is fun. On paper, it's like, no. Like, but he's just, also like a tragic villain. He's actually the, the least villainy of the villains to me. He has yeah. this horrible, you know, situation that he's in which is driving him towards evil or whatever mm-hmm. um and like to me the best portrayal of his story is i think it's episode three of ba- of animated batman right. um yeah heart of heart of ice mm-hmm. uh it's so like you're crying at the end of that thing um that and K- clayface like, clayface is, is is one of the such a good way talked about that i was like that's the only thing i'm like i don't think they can bring clayface to real i'm like one because i don't think they're going to do it it's not y'all not gonna do it justice y'all they cannot bring the phoenix saga to real life because 
I don't right. think y'all and have they've tried multiple times. This. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna need y'all to just stop. <laughs> y'all so like times. three strikes and you are out. Get no, we're not no, no, no. Just do so, no, baby. Pick another pick another story. Move on. Just move Please. on with your life. We, we tried. Not do this. We tried. So it's like Clayface is one of my faves that's not live action. I love the Clayface arcs from Batman. Yeah. So it's like I'm like, no, I'm like, y'all not going to do this justice. You're just not. It, it'll be tough. Because I think like, I mean, even though they did King Shark in the the um recent uh, Suicide Squad, like, because mm-hmm. he didn't really talk that much. It was, oh, yeah, and know, I haven't seen any Suicide Squad either. I'm very on the fence because that first one just fucked I me. liked it. The first one was terrible. The second one was was fine. Yeah, it was good. Okay. I mean, it was goofy. It was also goofy, but... Yeah. It, the goofiness was intentional. Like it did was having Margot in it, did it help? I mean, to, okay. So I I did not want to watch the first Suicide Squad because I don't like that iteration of Joker. Plus, I hate Jared, Jared Leto. I did end up watching it uh, in chunks on YouTube, and it was really tough to watch. It was, but it was terrible, terrible, terrible. The way she played Harley in that movie versus the way she played Harley in this movie mm-hmm. are different. Really? Um, okay. The way she played Harley in Birds of Prey is also mm-hmm. different. So to me, mm-hmm. she's played three different versions of Harley. She has not played they keep the same Harley in each back. of these movies. So I was she's great. That, right. It's like I'm thinking that she would be the same because y'all keep saying, mm-hmm. oh, she is Harley. And it's like mm-hmm. Oh. There's aspects of her that are the same, you know, and stuff like that, the acrobatics mm-hmm. and the 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 you know, going off half cocked and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. She's she's embodying the very Harley Harley things, but with like Birds of Prey Harley, you get more to the heart of her as a person. Oh, okay. Whereas the Suicide Squad number two mm-hmm. version of her, you get more of the teammate. Yeah, because I mean, honestly, so the first Suicide Squad, that was going to go see it was a birthday present, not the movie, but know. going to IPIC. So it was yeah. like the, uh, the the environment was great. I'm like, this movie is just terrible. But she was the best part of the whole movie. I imagine, like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, and I don't know that lady who does the modeling and now is doing the acting. I'm like, I'm going to need you to stop doing this. I need you oh, to do the modeling. Yeah, eyebrows is not a good actress. Like, and girl, this is the second. I'm stuff. like, that wasn't the second movie. The first, the second movie was the movie that I cannot remember the name of. And Rihanna was in there like 15 minutes and she was the best part of the movie. And I can't remember. Is it? It's one word and it's a weird word. I don't remember, but it's like, it's terrible. Okay, so can I just tell you that for some odd reason, when you comment on Instagram comments, um, for some reason, there are some white people who think that the internet is segregated and they have the good internet and they have the whites only <laughs> internet and I have the colored <laughs> internet. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, it doesn't sound far fetched at all. It it's just not. a funny it's way. It's very interesting. So I can't remember what page I was commenting on, and they were talking about how great, like they had arm, like Disney had great R and B ballads and really good R and B bops. You know, brought up like Whole New World, and brought up, um, I think you know, of course, the Hercules soundtrack. Brought up Unity Beast, and then they had Journey from the Press from Aaliyah, and I said. Well, Anastasia's just not a Disney movie, but that song is a bop. Mm-hmm. That's why, dude. Now, mind you, before I said anything, it's like that's not a Disney movie. Why would it be here? So, for everybody who you know acts like they don't have Google, um, in 2019, Disney acquired the um company that distributed Anastasia. Fox, right? Yep. So okay. someone said, "Well, I mean, Disney brought Fox, so yes, it counts." I'm like, "No, but it wasn't. A, it wasn't created through the Disney it model. Wasn't a, it's, it's not like, a, it's Disney, not a movie. Disney movie. It is and currently I, a Disney property, property, but it's not a Disney movie. It didn't come through the mechanics of Disney. So no, it's not. Mm-hmm. It was like it's not on there. And I was like, so when I looked, also, I was, they're like, "Well, I mean, it's acquired by Disney." I'm like, "Well, anything under Disney?" Because like, hello, Marvel is all over Disney Plus yeah spider-man just got there because it wasn't there at first because it was still kind of under fox so it was like yeah no well it's no still spider-man's under sony so, spider-man sony? is still okay, owned sony. by sony um so, x-men is fox and x-men so now fox. they have okay. x-men yeah which is because how they got on disney plus also. none of the spider-man movies were there like, why it's not here if it's marvel i'm like 
it's complicated. But yeah. now it's slowly but surely just they're working the out the newer Spider-Man movies. I didn't dig too yeah. deep to see if the like the Toby. I, um, I saw Toby's. I think Toby's. Toby's I, I is, think like, I saw Toby's in there. Yeah, because I think because at first they were actually. Not. I'm not 100 percent sure. I know Andrews are in. You're right. Uh, Andrews yeah. are there I'm on the front page. Toby's I, is there. I don't I, recall. Y'all, he's my least favorite Spider-Man, and people are like, yeah. why? I'm like, there's so many reasons why that 40 year old man terrible it's like i'm so yeah like, i know God. and he was 175 years old like come the fuck on a teenager absolutely not then y'all got andrew i'm like okay he's a little bit more scrappy. i kind of like see him. here's the thing in movies like save the last dance there was a whole lot of 30 year old niggas playing teenagers and that but. and that dance breakdown i'm like now see that <laughs> white girl did not deserve everybody the- thought that was the f- <laughs> like, what the fuck are we f-ing? girl <laughs> but you can't put a 30 year old Toby that we and know make is us, over 30. That we know that is over 30 and convince like us. He had like because the difference in Save the Last Dance is Black Don't Crack. In Spider Man, it's 40 year old, you look creepy here. Hello. Girl, we got you gotta wear concealer under your eye to make us believe that you're in college. And then there's Tom Holland, who I'm like. I feel like y'all finally got this right because y'all actually casted like a kid. Yeah. Like, because Andrew was like, what, early 20s? He was, yeah, and, and I didn't and think he was all that bad, but it's, he wasn't he was terrible. More, he was, he, he was fine. And if he had a third movie opportunity, I think, I think his trilogy would have been fine. Yeah. Cause Jamie Foxx really did cash that check on that suck when I'm like, I get it, Jamie. <laughs> Like, rent was due i get it i'm you, like you gotta do it you gotta he do it. definitely is phoning it in and i'm like he got uh, he he got his um what do you call it like a in in the third tom holland spider-man movie where he got a chance to mm-hmm. what's I, the thing i'm looking redeem redeem redemption, yeah. his arc i guess yeah. because it you know it wasn't like, his fault I, I liked him in that movie even though that third spider oh Beautiful you didn't like gowns. the third spider it was the thing, Man, I that think, was my favorite. I think God. what it is is that the multiverse saga seems so disjointed for me. Because it's the multiverse. It's, it's I think it's that, but also because the schedules got flipped around and everybody's movie got moved around. And I think that yeah. for me, that's what is the problem. It I'm did like, make it a little bit crazy. And they did kind of need to have, like what we don't have is a cohesive it's because Spider-Man this is fucked up or yeah, it's because yeah. of Doctor Strange is fucked yeah, up or it's because been, of Loki yeah, and it's fucked Eddie up. And then Eddie and Shang-Chi, I'm like, how does he fold into this? Ant-Man, how does this? I was like, I mean... Yeah, we don't, don't really want, know how everybody is like, I don't want to say it. Like, even the with the, I think with like the Infinity Saga, even though it's like, we didn't know everybody was connected, but then it's like, uh, uh, They found a way, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. This, it isn't for and i'm like i'm like i feel like i'm just slow but also the movies to me in this new saga do not feel like y'all it feels like a stephen king novel they don't feel as cohesive and then by the end it's like what did y'all just say definitely don't break for lunch yeah they definitely don't feel as cohesive what i'm hoping is that well what i hoped was going to happen which now we don't know because we're in limbo with this is That once they united everything under the Kang situation, mm-hmm. yeah, we would start it, to is it be the able multiverse to. Saga or the Kang saga, it would be the multiverse saga, but okay. Kang would be your best multiverse. That's he's agent the big of bad. Chaos. Yeah, he's the big bad, okay. and so in the same way that they got several movies in before they decided to land on Thanos in the yeah. first saga, yeah. um, you know, it kind of looked like they were trying to get there. And but really, mm-hmm. it this is all based off of that one scene in Loki with Jonathan right. Major. Because I was like, he, how did I was like, how did y'all settle on this? Because even the the Shang Chi of it all is like, yeah. One, I like Shang Chi individually by itself. I'm like individually I think the by movie itself, is amazing. I'm like, but you can't okay. figure out how it's gonna fold in like, yet. Okay, so here's Doctor Strange because here is Wong. I'm like, so not because he Asian. Don't get off my nerves. Well, yes, 
yes, that, but, <laughs> but because Wong is also the Sorcerer Supreme right now, which right, we didn't right, know at right. the time of Shang-Chi, right, it I makes didn't. I was like, oh, after the fact, but in the moment you're like, yeah, bring us the Asian Sorcerer, like, oh, okay. which as an Asian, I was fine with, um, but at the same time, it was also just like, mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think, was there anybody non-Asian? Because the, the friend was Asian, the boyfriend of the friend was indian so he's an asian too yeah because the thing about this is like asian. this is Except like the maybe the oh, yeah. third or fourth movie that featured aquafina that i literally am just like yeah she's she's an ass and she gets on my nerves but i'm like i don't mind i her just in went this off movie. on this the other day i can i am getting so frustrated by how much aquafina makes me enjoy her okay okay because i need to not come, because come she through. pisses come me through. off just like Shang Chi and I went to go see Little Mermaid. My little black girl tears was I was like I will refuse to cry in this movie theater about this fucking movie. I <laughs> refuse to do this. And I know Lin Manuel Manuel Miranda. He's also all over this. Um, this he's all over it. His time um, is is coming to an end it's like I think. it really we, is because let me just say this i enjoy his stuff i just don't want to Encanto all the time love it vivo love Encanto. vivo which is like it was a netflix movie i'm like i feel like this should have been in the movie theater, but because of the pandemic it wasn't mm-hmm. the mu- the music is great the it's a cute little movie it really truly is i'm like okay then and then but we got the scuttle yeah he did the, he did the soundtrack and then of course one of the new songs they added to little mermaid is called scuttlebutt and i kind of dig it it actually it is was kind a of fucking good. bop it was a stupid yeah. corny okay. bop but it was a bop and i got like i just like with sean Bay the other day i was going off i was like this bitch is killing me because she still won't 100 percent like she's gotten on the line of apologizing for her past mm-hmm. but she still hasn't made the full apology mm-hmm. and she still puts it on to a degree when mm-hmm. it is warranted and you know she's getting that disney money through marvel mm-hmm. and through disney now mm-hmm. and she turned it off for marvel but she turned it back on for scuttle yeah a little because bit remember that dragon a little movie? bit she was in that disney movie with the dragon which one was that what's it called raya yeah raya that's right that's right raya. and one i like that movie again did not hate her i'm like yeah i don't even know i kind of like i'm like this is like let's see i mean i raya, also kind of like her in the what's it called aquafina um, i'm saying aquafina little mermaid that's three movies i'm like it's something else that i can't remember what it is the uh the jumanji she's not terrible in that either jumanji i was like so like the the problem is that i'm all for people changing their behavior and mm-hmm. you start to see it and you can just look past their past i'm i'm down for that i'm fine for but that. don't sit in my face and say hey i hear y'all if y'all ready to have the conversation bitch they've been having a conversation for we've been a having decade. a conversation yeah my problem is that yes you change your behavior mm-hmm. but you still haven't but you're not addressing up. why this come up it's like i mean this is how i have new york ma'am you're in the whitest part of queens Private yeah again. she i know uh, like i literally just had a couple other people on my show that are also asian or mixed asian in particular living and she's a mixed asian too living in the same neighborhood that she lives in and they don't have that accent either and the thing is like and we talk about this too you know i grew up in long beach and we had black kids we had white kids we had Mm -hmm. mexican kids Mm -hmm. the yes everybody kind of did say nigga except Mm -hmm. for the white kids but the white kids did not have a black scent they did sound like they were from the neighborhood though which is different because a black scent is the Shaniqua voice or the Tyrone yeah. voice. This is not like you in Boston and you're talking like, like if you're having a New York, like the right. universal New York accent is not a black scent. Right. So it's like, Nora, what are you doing? Yeah. So And okay. the thing is, her ca- her voice her cadence. has like, a, girl. a cadence that she can do enough with. She doesn't Correct. have to turn on a black scent. But then say be... like, oh, I don't want to like put on like a character. It's like, oh, this baby went what the mm-hmm. fuck do yeah. and that's exactly and that's exactly where she messed up you're because like she, she could have not said that and then people will be like wait a minute hold up 
but you've been putting yeah. on like a you've costume been on a character for forever. how many yeah. years? Yeah. I mean, now, you call yourself Aquafina. You, you understand it? It's like, yeah. Girl, what? Like, okay, so. You, you could have been Nora, but you decided to be Aquafina. I'm like, girl, what's wrong with Nora? It's like, I'm, see, I'm saying that because I, I mean, girl, I get it. My name is Stephanie. Okay. So it's like, I get it. <laughs> So, okay, so back to, like, the whole thing with, Anna said it's not a Disney movie, Journey to the Past, it's still a bop. This random-ass white woman hopped in my DMs and sent me a <laughs> screenshot, because at the time, when I looked at Disney+, Plus, because, you know, some you acquire stuff, it's on there. It wasn't on Disney, but I was like, but also, the movie's from 1997, the acquisition was 2019. It is not a Disney movie. Have a good day. Mm-hmm. And so then some random-ass white woman decided to hop in my DMs and send me a screenshot of Your her Disney DMs. Plus that show that Anastasia is there, which by the way, it is there now. I was like, Congratulations. <laughs> it's accessible. I'm like, uh-huh. That still doesn't so, mean it was a it's Disney. Not, movie. I'm like, it's still not a... see the thing about it is I also she did this on Monday night after I watched that bullshit um summer house reunion and she and I was like about to scream. I'm like, let me tell your ass something. I was about to come through that um fucking screen because i'm sitting here like so let me get this right i just want to make sure y'all saying this somebody can make your engagement about them and you should think about their fucking feelings and try to dissect why the fuck they're acting like an asshole oh hell no Mm. okay i can't i can't do this so this next little white lady decided to hop into my dms i'm in canada so maybe it makes a difference i know some shows show up differently depending on your location i just went raggedy hooker did not <laughs> when the movie was made it was not under disney anastasia is not a disney movie disney acquiring fox yeah fox in 2019 does not make it a disney movie that is literally my point it isn't a disney movie anastasia isn't a disney princess that has nothing to do with journey to the past being an eternal bop because it's sung by Aaliyah. sorry that wasn't why i sent it you had mentioned you didn't see it on disney plus i also said it wasn't on disney plus in the u.s Streaming services rights aren't universal because at the time mm-hmm. when I made this comment, it wasn't there. If y'all want to watch Anastasia on Disney Plus, it's there. Mm. What now, is you know the... what? I don't think I've ever seen. I've Anastasia. seen it. Like that's the thing. I, I watched it when I was younger, but also I was a huge Aaliyah fan, so it was like, right, yeah. What is universal is that Anastasia is not a Disney movie. She. So when I said it wasn't in on Disney Plus in the U.S. Oh, my apologies. I missed that part. I didn't. That's why I honestly wish folks weren't trying to argue me down. I had literally Googled it before I commented, which I also did say. It's exhausting. No, no, not an argument. I legit, legitimately thought you hadn't seen it and was like, oh, weird, because I know shows in U.S. aren't available in Canada. I had also looked on my Disney Plus before I commented as well. I knew what I was talking about. I only remember to send it today because... Let me just say this. I commented like over a week ago. Oh, and it just so that was hitting. the other thing that pissed me off. Oh, God, like you week? dug you dug far enough back to get it from a week, but you couldn't dig a little bit further to get the whole conversation thread. I wanted to send it today when I opened it to play something for my son. Fucking your raggedy ass kids. See, I'm not yeah, cheeky, y'all. I don't. I ain't doing this with kids, but it was like, girl, I know this wasn't your intention, but the impact is the argument, which wasn't necessary but it's interesting to know that it's not available everywhere else again as i stated availability wasn't the point of my post my point was that it is not a disney movie you can take it as an argument to me it was informative because i didn't know disney plus limited based on region it isn't informative to me period okie dokies take care good night tell your white ass something (laughs) i'm exactly sure why there are white people who do that who think, oh, I'm just trying to enlighten you. Bitch, I have Google. I know how to search. I do not have the colored only version of the internet. internet. Like, I swear. I'm like, (sighs) why are there people like this? I'm like, ma'am, it is a comment from a random, I don't even remember what Instagram post this was. That's the other part too. Like, Like, you can tell when something's posted it says a week ago 29 weeks ago whatever yeah not like in the same day and also even if it was bitch, it's informative to you then maybe you and your son can have a discussion about it 
Yeah. When you're watching something. Because you got to dig it out of your phone for him to watch a movie and not on the tele. Girl, okay. <laughs> These all fun and games until I snatch somebody's soul. They're like, yeah. So then it's kind of like when you are a black or brown person and you are ignored by some white person who think they got to educate you on, I don't know, using a phone or the internet. And mm -hmm. then you go, I know what, what I said what i wanted i knew what i was talking about oh, performed it to you it's annoying as hell to come back god knows after a fortnight of when i'm <laughs> fucking talking like, i'm sorry now i talking? gotta remember what the whole thing Man, was about in the first place talk about anastasia bitch it's not a disney movie have a good day this is the thing about the internet because sometimes i'm like why did i comment because it's like i should you know See, this is why to i try not peace. to because this like, because one, the person who said it's a Disney movie was a white dude. Yeah. Because of course it was. Yeah. Like, and you don't want to like, have to say it all the time. Google is, like, is free, uh, but you know, like you feel like, like there's Google these moments is so where... free. Also, what is free? Minding your fucking business. Yeah. Why? I'm like, you want to, I'm like, girl, I'm not here to argue with you, but also it takes me to get involved in said conversation. And I'm like, why did I even get involved? Yeah. See, it was like that's. I'm like, um, because the, the my Bravo show, someone wanted to argue me down because if you are, you know, having a argument with a friend, I'm going to ask you randomly, and that person says to you, "We are done. The friendship is over." When they break up with their man three months ago, you're I'm like, wait, you didn't just check on her. I'm like, she said to me, "We are done." What did you want her to do? Okay, we done. Like, what, what the hell? Obviously, you've never... So, wait, what happened? The person so, ended a friendship so, because they were so talking the two, about so, the boyfriend? This is the thing about... So I can't believe we're... I'm bringing her into summer house. She's not going to watch it, y'all. I promise. She's not. Because... I'm not um, going to watch it. I, 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 yeah, I'm not going to watch it. So, this is the thing with summer house. Two friends, Lindsay and Danielle, they are friends. They are really cute together. Like, they... Uh, two of them, two, the Migas, and then... Lindsay's now fiance Carl. They were friends. The the the, the Trace Amigos and I'm like. Okay. Um. By the way, Danielle's Mexican. Are they white? Danielle's Mexican. Okay. Lindsay and Carl are white. Yeah. Oh, sounds, also, sounds white. Lindsay and I share a birthday. Okay. So you already know how this is gonna. So, they at the beginning of this summer, um, Lindsay and Carl used to date years ago. Danielle and Carl dated years before that. Um, Lindsay and Carl got together. They are actually pretty serious because they actually have history. They've also been friends for seven years. So they moved in together, you know, pretty serious relationship. Um, other women in the house don't like Lindsay and the feeling is mutual. Danielle, her best friend, brought her concerns. I'm putting this in quotes. Concerns <laughs> about their relationship to the people who don't like Lindsay. Ooh, so then and they're supposed to be friends? Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, see this so then that person who does not like Lindsay told Lindsay what Danielle said oh and Danielle told me that she thinks you're moving too fast yes 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 so then Lindsay was like what so then here it is Danielle is like oh my god they're going too fast Carl because Carl was also the friend told Danielle I'm thinking about um he's like I'm, I've been looking at rings she picks up a pillow and starts screaming into it dramatic friend exactly if you're telling your friend that you are going to propose you're thinking about proposing to her best friend what would the message be if she picks up a pillow and screams into it kind of seems like she's not over your past and you don't want your friend to be happy so then i think the uh, maybe like the weekend before he actually did propose she told other people in the house if it happens i don't even want to be in the Hamptons when it happens. I don't even want to be here. They can have a good life. That, that, that. He proposes. It's like he contacted her friends and family. They had to fly out through a surprise party. Her drunk ass was walking around that party complaining that she didn't know anything about the engagement. The engagement that she said she didn't even want to be in. in but in, the in cameras Tampa. exist. Why do they always act like we don't know that the cameras are there? It was like the thing. So 
I'm someone who is not married, but I have friends like Charmaine who are married or and or coupled or engaged. Do you know how many how many of them have literally come to me and said, oh, I knew I was getting engaged. I, it wasn't a surprise. Why does this matter? I'm like, exactly. Because then the women are like, why are you acting like you didn't know? I'm like, I'm pretty sure someone who's living together, paying $13,000 in rent, you know, this is pretty serious. So, you know, a ring is going to happen. The exact also, day it moment. seems weird to me that you would be surprised engaged, like in surprise. Especially asked. if like, you're literally living together. Like, yeah, like it's not a surprise. Ha- like the surprise should be how you How ask. it happens. But the discussion about we want to get married, we want to have kids, we don't want to have kids, we want to live here, we don't want to live here. That kind mm-hmm. of shit should happen far before the ask happens. Because you actually kind of know, because it's like you wouldn't be trying to like buy a ring if you're like, I don't even think this person want to get married. Yeah. She had to work. So she was just like, very, like I, she then she was hurt that she wasn't included. And I'm sitting here like, you told but people you how said... she didn't want to say it. You screamed in the pillow when he even mentioned it. And in then, front of him, he got to see her do that. He, he was, she was talking to him when she did it. So Bro. then at the party, she was complaining about not knowing to her friends. And they told her, she was like, what the hell is wrong with because one of them said daniel this day is not about you it's not about you it's not about you so then of course her friends during the week because summer house is like they only do it on the weekend so during the week her friends were like do you know what daniel was doing at your engagement party she was like what the hell so then Dude, like it's all on camera too it's like damn i can see you so then they get to the last me get to the last weekend and then they're arguing and Daniel's like this one side and i can't believe you it's like the door is closed. We are done. And she said, oh, we've been done, darling. And every, so then at the reunion. So the one who got engaged is the one who said, confirmed we've been done. She thought we've been done, darling. Okay. And I think I was like, the thing I'm sitting here like, Danielle, it's like, you've never argued with the Leo. Oh, don't try to put a good time. You've lost your goddamn. It's just like, so then you come to the reunion and everybody's like, well, Lexi, can't you understand why her feelings are hurt? I'm like, are y'all fucking kidding me right now? So the one who got engaged is, is responsible for the feelings of the one that could not support her friend? Mm-hmm. Okay, just checking. So of course, all this with the, um, the DM, that I was like, I cannot believe I'm watching this. And there are people who literally, if you say, Wait a minute. And my, I was like, so I'm the only one who literally saw Daniel tell Linda that the friendship was done. So why? And so, because Daniel was like, I don't understand why you didn't reach out to me. Ma'am. Why would I? Memorial. Why would I? Excuse me. You On Labor Day, you told me we were done. I don't give a fuck about that man that you broke up with in December. Why would I reach out to you? Also, like, you don't have to stay responsible for people's feeling. I mean, you're never responsible for people's never. feelings. That being said, for the no. people that you care about or you've had a, a friendship you care about and that friendship ends, that's done. Like, I mean, I don't talk to any exes. I don't talk to when a friendship is over, it's over. Um, don't tell me we done. It's like, okay, we done. There's so no confusion. Expect, like, I don't understand this. I'm like, but the thing about this, everybody's like, Lindsay's thing about her feelings. I'm like, so what? Wait a minute. So if you, as my friend, have concerns about my relationship, which as a 40-year-old Black woman, that's weird as hell to me. But anyway, we'll, we'll just- I mean, is he beating her and you're aware of this and she's still excited about getting engaged? I have concerns about your relationship. Fine. But literally <laughs> saying, I think they're rushing into it. And it's like, but the thing, but- Oh, let me add this part about Daniel. So the man that her and her broke up with, she had only known this man two whole months and they moved in together. Lindsay and Carl knew each other for years. You knew Robert for two months and moved in. That's I'm sorry, did, Car- did, did, did Lindsay come to you and say, I have a concern? Or did she literally live that you live your life? Yeah. Yeah. So then, of course, people because this is the other thing about Bravo fandom. When you don't necessarily like the person, you kind of take out reason and common sense because I'm like in a situation. And that's why I found myself doing it when I watch these shows now. I'm like, I got to treat more calm, situational because I'm like, no, wait a minute, hold up. Also, the Bravo model, I used to work for Bravo shows. 
Bravo model is very formulaic and what they do and what they tell their reality show mm -hmm. people to do and stuff like that is typically very uh, formulaic and stuff like that. So like for me, it's hard to watch them because I used to work on them, you know, yeah. Um but because I used I to watch them, it's like I used to watch them until I started working for them. Once I started working for them, and, and it's you know, it's it's no shade to Bravo because they're giving the people what they want. Yeah, you know. Yeah, do do what you do, but I I don't. Do that's why do. I don't watch. <laughs> that's why I don't watch do them anymore do. because like I'm like, and this is the moment when X happens. Like you yeah. know, I can kind of I can kind of see it. It's kind of like me. But... Like I look like I used to work for Macy's. Can I tell you, I have never been back to a Macy's, but also working. And retail has helped me to be a better customer. It's actually kind of yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Like once you work in like, you know, customer service or retail anyway, it like it makes you think about this before. Cause before it's like your customer is like, I think you take this job. I'm like, you got me to get in the door. Yeah. It's like, you know, like it makes me be a better customer. And everybody's like, really? I'm like, yeah. I mean, there are some people who work in retail and they are the same, but yeah, some people ain't got no business being in being in it. Yeah, but like, if it's what you have access to, it's what you have access to. Yeah, it's kind of like it is what it oh is. My gosh, I'm like, oh, it's like, it's like I can't be this customer because my god, this is annoying to me. Man, TikTok is opening that up like crazy for me. So I follow a lot really? of small business, like a lot of small business owners, um, right? Like onesie twosie type of side hustle people like okay, me. Like so I'm this one person. One more thing before we close, can we please talk about this Keep Lee thing and that chicken fire thing? Speaking of chicken a, fire? so is it chicken fire? Yeah. So have you seen the guy Keith Lee on TikTok? Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean the lady who's trying to claim that? Oh no, it's the, the dude restaurant. who says mm -hmm. he doesn't appreciate the yeah, or he doesn't care about the review. It doesn't but what his yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have seen part of about this. Keith Lee. I enjoy him, but most people do. That's why he got millions of people. Now yes. this guy literally reached out to keep because the thing about the people have seen like. Their business boom when Keith Change, comes yeah. there and he does really good reviews. The problem with this is that the food was not all that good. It was like the thing about this, it's like it's like you want to go. It's like But he also said to me, he's he like, I still suggest you go he's and like, eat it because, because maybe it didn't work like it. on me. Correct. Yeah. He's now, very think, thoughtful. About that's it. why I like about him. He's like, I don't want y'all sending no hate. He's like, this is just like because he'll tell talk, talk about. He's somebody who doesn't like a lot of sweet stuff. So he's like, yeah. I only like sweet stuff and I think this is good or it's a little too yeah. sweet for me. I don't like sweet, but judge for yourself. Or he'll say like, my wife doesn't mind X and I mm -hmm. don't particularly like X and she kind of liked it. So, yeah. you know, he has you a, like I think sweet, he has a shellfish yeah. allergy. He has a shellfish so, allergy, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like when people have like seafood restaurants, he's like, I have a shell. Yeah, so, so like he'll have do. his wife eat the shellfish stuff, yeah. and yeah. he'll eat the other stuff or whatever. Yeah. Or people make him something special, but he's he's very specific about yeah my taste buds, my mouth because that's Correct. the thing. You got your own taste buds. It, it might be garbage to you. Tree and me can't like he can eat anything and find really? joy out of it, and mm. I am picky as hell. So. I can't yeah. rely on him telling me it tastes good. Yeah. I have to taste it myself because I'm picky. Correct. Right. And I think that's the best thing about like folks like Keith Lee. Cause one, even with him saying he didn't necessarily enjoy it that much, he still didn't say it he was terrible tasted. food. Yeah. It was just the thing about because you literally seeked him out. And when you saw him, it's like, no, be honest, be honest. You want to know? Yeah, why? and we have that on video. Like we he have the clip. Has it. I was like, <laughs> wait, what the hell? And you know, you know why? Because he is probably thinking, "Get me a bad review. I'm a black man. He a black man." And it's like yeah. he just. I'm like, I've seen him say he didn't enjoy something, but he also said, "I didn't enjoy it, but you should try it for yourself." And he has given marks like that to other restaurants that mm -hmm. did do good after mm -hmm. his review because he's like the customer service was on point mm -hmm. they really seemed to care mm -hmm. this food this part of the food was good but like this the customer part service i did was not amazing. like i didn't really like the food but the yeah. customer service is great right so he he like so if he has i, I can i can't imagine if someone like him doesn't find some kind of positive because he seems to be mm -hmm. the kind of guy that will try to find some kind of positive mm -hmm. um like 
even if he absolutely hated the food, he mm-hmm. would have given points in other places. And I don't recall his his uh it wasn't like being... this taste terrible. It just yeah. wasn't high marks. And then you're saying to so here's the thing. Basically it was constructive. It wasn't mm. ne- it wasn't negative criticism, it was constructive, but it wasn't glowing. And I get that. Because you're talking to your staff and the staff's like, I oh, thought we did good. I'm like, you literally dropping the chicken that you did not season or prepare is doesn't mean that you didn't do well. If you were at the if you're at the register, that doesn't mean you didn't do well. It yeah. just wasn't good enough for him. But the thing about it is, please stop acting like Keith Lee is one person and no one has ever said they didn't like your food. I'm saying you're in a brick right? and mortar, like, you're not in a food truck or coming out of your own kitchen. You're in a brick and mortar restaurant. Because you don't reach out to Keith Lee because you're super successful and you have no problems. Correct. You reach out to Keith Lee because you're an unknown spot. And, and you're trying to get better. Yeah. And because like what happened with that that one dude, that one real heartfelt dude in, in um, Las Vegas where the the um, employees reached out, not mm-hmm. not the owner, but the employees the reached the out. employees. Yeah, and, and, and like, so the owner didn't know shit about it or whatever, mm-hmm. and they've had to close business several times because they've sold out of food, and mm-hmm. and he's been so grateful and stuff like that. That mm-hmm. guy, yeah, when when he walked in there, he said, you know, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna do this or whatever, and mm-hmm. he was so like, you know, how good this food was, blah 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 mm-hmm. blah blah, and and the and the guy blew up. So if you're using that as your benchmark, if Keith Lee comes to my restaurant, this is gonna happen. Mm-hmm. That's not going to happen to every single small business. That's not going to no. happen to every single place. You have to have a whole bunch of things in line for it to give you that glowing mm-hmm. regu- review that's going to change your life. The fact of the matter is, I bet if if he hadn't wild like that, more mm-hmm. people would have showed up at his restaurant just to see. Right. Because it's kind of like they would have been like, okay, well, let me see what Keith Lee said. Not that like he would never steal me wrong. Because it's not Keith Lee saying, give him critique. It's more of that's how. You- sir don't say it don't matter what he say i'm like you asked him to come here he didn't just find you yeah that uh, right that would make more sense that would be different just rolled in apparently it was like he did an 18 minute video too and i'm like this would be different if he just stumbled across your restaurant and said that and then like yo i'm like we gonna get better it's fine it's like no you asked you asked you asked and the thing is and you told him to be honest and you asked because you believed in yourself so much that you thought by saying you can say whatever and right. it wouldn't like, matter. I'm like, I'm like, he gonna love it. So it don't even matter. And I'm like, the thing about this, there's nothing wrong with thinking like our food is the best. I don't think anybody goes around like I'm over this restaurant and my food is nasty. No, right. Say that. Why would you do that? You'd no be one crazy. would do that. It's like, dude, you might as well stay in your kitchen. Don't, don't get a yeah. freaking Morton store. Don't get like more than one opening, but it's kind of like, don't ask. You want the clout. But the thing about it is, even with him not giving a glowing recommendation, people still go to the restaurant and like, oh, let's just see what he said. Because yeah. he also leads it up to, I'm only going, I can only use the taste buds that's in my mouth. I can't yeah. use yours. And he says, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. You, you and you can give me extra free said, shit or not right. or whatever. It doesn't that's matter. He'll be like, truth. I don't ever tell people when I'm coming. Sometimes I ask my wife to go get it. He's like, I don't even put my name. Yeah. And Because a lot of people say, He'll just do it like after he went and got the food. It's not while he's doing it. So it yeah. could be a day or so after. It's like, they're probably like, and also what would be his you? motivation? Given exactly. what Keith Lee has built, what would be his mm-hmm. motivation to go to a random ass restaurant and trash it? Correct. And the, the, and I'm sitting here like, he didn't even trash his restaurant. He didn't actually even trash it. it was he like, just said he it just wasn't said, the best. It's, okay. it's like, the best. It's, it's like, mid. It's mid. And it's like, you know what? Much- and there's, you plenty can... of mid ass places you'll go to eat at and you'll because still go. it's closer because it's coming and you'll still fucking go there, so look a lot of people love chilies and i'm like chilies gave me food poisoning no i'm good i was like Mm-mm. but i'm also somebody who's like i will never be too rich to not shop at all these they're like what I'm like that is my shit like please leave me alone. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, and like, that's also how I feel about Buffalo Wild Wings. There are people who love the food there, and I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Um, but for me, Panda Express, I love Panda Express. Okay. I know it's not for everybody. So you like, like, do you know how much I love that orange chicken? I fucking love it. It's so I'll like, it. I don't care. I don't care. 
They're like, the rice is mushy. And it goes well with my yeah. orange chicken. Sure the fuck does. Um, so, I kind of yeah. miss the beef and broccoli because it seems like they kind of like pulled it off the menu very quietly. I'm like, Oh, did they? Because The really last time I had it, it was like a month or so before I left the U.S. I'm trying to so. think, wait, they might be on it, but it's just like, maybe it's because they're highlighting other stuff maybe. in front of it. That's probably why I just didn't notice. I'm like, that used to be like orange chicken and beef and broccoli with you know um, what they rice. got me on what? one day they ran out of orange chicken and mm-hmm. so they're like you want this kung pao chicken i was like yeah sure fine i started ordering kung pao chicken after that all the time that's how i feel about the teriyaki chicken but i'm like give me the sauce on the side <laughs> i do it's really? like i don't know what it is about it i'm like give me the sauce on the side i love that chicken because sometimes it like is it dry a little bit but still love it i'm like i hate y'all when y'all talk about it i'm like i don't care but again like yeah it's mid it's not the best food it's on not the planet. Bus, but it's like it's something like sometimes it's what you want though it's just so it's just what i want it's yep. like how i feel about taco bell i'm like girl i, I really I wish taco they bell would bring anytime. back the fu- please bring back the taco salad do not bring back the mac i'm like when they brought because i was somebody who never had the mexican pizza because i didn't really go to taco bell the i only, only had it because they took it away right <laughs> Straight up. I'm like, I never had the taco salad. The only thing I used to literally get from Taco Bell was the taco salad. Mm-hmm. So when they got rid of it, I was like, Tria was I'm... the Enchiritos. He fucking loved the Enchiritos. The and then they took that out. Like, off. I didn't even know. Wait, I... Enchiritos was like their enchilada thing. Oh. But but they got rid of that. And he they, he used to eat that shit like crazy. Oh. No, they no. didn't bring it back. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because like, I need your yeah, again... taco salad. It's like, like that guy's stuff, restaurant like, could have been somebody's panda some people might be like like it's right like, around the corner from my house like it. right it's like one and see like because it didn't look like it looked who didn't look bad but then here comes tiktok you click one um hashtag one hashtag all of a sudden you down a rabbit hole someone said oh i had that food and it made me sick i'm like so yeah, I mean, I think oh. what he was expecting was Keith Lee to do the magic glowing. touch and yeah. change the restaurant. But here's the thing. You can't change the restaurant. Correct. You can just show the people that you enjoyed it and you had a good time. Correct. And that's the magic of Keith Lee. Is the, fo- the food still has to win you over. Correct. Even if you're excited about the story, you mm-hmm. still got to go there and eat the food. If you don't like the food, you'd be like, it was a cute story, but it's not for me. Like, I mean, but if you liked the food, I mean, but great. It's like, go ahead. And he literally said, go ahead and try for yourself. He didn't say, don't ever. Even personally, he's given like critique. Say he's like, oh, this food is not good. He has never said, um, don't ever don't go, go here. He's just like, yeah. it wasn't good for me, but you can try it for yourself. Yeah. That's and I imagine honest. even if he had terrible customer service from a place, he would still say, maybe the they had a bad good. day. Maybe but the food was good. Go check yeah. it out. Yeah. So, you know, um, yeah, we we yeah. had a love Keith Lee over here, and I love how there's like this like little bubble of protection around him, especially all black women. Like, so what you're not going to do? Yeah. When we see a dude who ain't shit, who 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 isn't a ain't shit dude, it's like, so yeah. what we're not going to do? Yeah. Not too much on our Keithy baby. He's our nephew. Leave my nephew alone. It's like when that woman tried to say Keith Lee stole her idea, and he's like, "Here's all the receipts. I don't know what to say." And the bad part about it, she's like, "I never said it was Keith Lee." I'm like, "But girl, you were in your comments liking it when someone was saying, are you still Keith Lee?'" Mm-hmm. So it's like, "Well, then who the hell were you talking?" So that's the thing. It's like, did you say his name? No. But when people were asking you questions and mm-hmm. commenting, you were you confirming. Didn't you kind of? loosely confirmed it and then he had to make a video i was like wait what the heck is he t-? that's why i like all the keith lee stole my um and they're so funny he's like this is hilarious i'm like keith lee stole my, <laughs> keith lee stole my carmax and we're gonna talk about it i'm sorry this is, this is kind of funny this, this really is kind of funny tiktok is a rabbit hole of girl with the hell because i got sucked there sucked into that tat the um tattoo talk that like scammer lady oh yeah the scam talk like, yeah because even for me because i'm like i try not to follow too many white folks because then it changes my algorithm but then this story i needed to know more about tattoo i was like i'm sorry to know more about you have to you do a consultation for her to draw a picture 
See, oh. I've done that. Okay, so for these, I did a consultation like two weeks before my appointment, okay. but it was to draw it out, but he didn't charge me for it. We talked it out. Mm -hmm. He did some rough sketches. But he, he said, didn't charge okay. you for that. He didn't charge me for it. We did we did like a 30 minute meeting. He did some rough sketches. I said, I kind of like this. He goes, I'll send you more later on, you know, mm -hmm. as I work it out and stuff like that. And I said, bet we we calculated how much the tattoo was going to cost. And he was like, you only have to put half down. I ended mm -hmm. up putting like most of it down because I had it in my hand at the time and I knew I'd spend mm -hmm. it. So I'm like, I'm mm -hmm. just gonna go ahead and give you all of this right now. And I'll pay the last like 150 on the day. Right. Um, Two weeks go by during that two weeks, he's emailing me. What about this? Mm -hmm. If I change it this way, what if I use this color? What if I position mm -hmm. it this way and stuff like that? And so by the time I got there, the only miscommunication that we had, and it was kind of a language thing was I was saying, I wanted something on my chest. That's about four inches, you know, oh, okay. the whole tattoo, because mm -hmm. I didn't want it on my breast. He thought I said four inch cranes. Oh. So while these aren't entirely four inches, they're quite big. These are way too big to have on my chest. So I wasn't about to have that. I, I uh -oh. that's not the. So you just had put I them wanted. on the arm. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, "Can we get them smaller?" And he's like, "You'll mm -hmm. lose all the detail because each each crane has a different detail because they each symbolize a different member oh. of my family." Oh. Nice. And um, so I have one that's cherry blossoms for my grandmother. I have mm -hmm. one that is water for my mother, and then I have one that is bamboo for my aunt. And each Ooh. thing has a significance for each thing. Hmm. Um, mind you, I don't get to talk to any, or well, two of these women, I don't talk to anymore. One of them, I don't get to because of who they live with. So it is what it is, but okay. it's still important to me. It's how I represent my family. Mm -hmm. um, so when he said I'd lose that detail, I was like, the detail was more important than the crane itself. Cause each mm -hmm. one was very specific. So I was like, can we just, if it's going to stay that size, can we just do it on my arm? And he was like, yeah, sure. So mm -hmm. we didn't change anything from there, but you see, like it was a, it was a going back and, and also forth. It when was she a was talking about the, like the um the deposit apparently it didn't go towards the cost of the tattoo I'm like girl so what the what? fuck is it a deposit goes towards the cost yeah, of things that's what a deposit like, is huh? so like the only way that that would make sense is like when you pay a deposit on rent mm -hmm. you're you're and there's like first and last month or whatever mm -hmm. they're saying we're going to hold on to this to make sure we pay for anything that needs to get paid for. Mm -hmm. And then whatever's left over, like we got to replace back. anything. We got to so, clean yeah. it. Replace, so in yeah. that case, yeah, technically you're not, it's not going towards the thing unless mm -hmm. of course it's built in. Right. Like mm -hmm. I have one that's built in my first month was paid for through my deposit, but mm -hmm. then my, you know, my, the rest of my deposit is for the cats for damage da, 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 mm -hmm. and I'm going to get that back. If, as long as the house is into that. So in that case, that would make sense. But for a tattoo, what are you paying a deposit on time yeah, when i tell you tattoo talk was like who the fuck is this girl i'm like i don't that know that's a and scam yeah and apparently no. some big name tattoo artist just did it for her but the thing i was like when you told thousands of dollars i'm like i'm sorry these things aren't cheap like and, and it's just to do it like because of somebody on instagram i'm like yeah and the thing is, I follow tattoo artists and some of them, it's because I hope that one day I can afford to get their tattoo. Mm -hmm. There's one lady in particular. I know it would cost me thousands of dollars if I ever get one from her. And I mm -hmm. will be ready to be like, you can do almost anything, mm -hmm. you know, like because of the way I like her art style or whatever. I still mm -hmm. want it to be within my things that I would be comfortable having on my body. But mm -hmm. within that scope, I would give her a whole lot of, you know, room, but right. But I've also been following her for a long time. I'm familiar with her style. I'm familiar with multiple sessions that she's done with people over months and stuff like that, you know, things like that. But if I put down a deposit and then she says, this does not go towards the cost of the like, tattoo, like then I didn't put down a deposit. You just robbed me. <laughs> Correct. Correct. You just robbed me. Um, I, I just, no. Because the just, only way that that would make sense that I wouldn't get my deposit back or wouldn't go towards my tattoo is if we had a scheduled appointment at four o'clock on Friday and I didn't show up. And then you're like, I'm keeping your deposit because that was the money I was supposed to make during that time. Mm. And then you'd be like, that makes sense. I mean, it sucks, but it makes yeah. sense because these are small business owners and this is how yeah. they live. So if you don't show up on time or you don't show up at all, they'll keep your deposit. That fucking makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, 
in my case, my guy, I was, I was like, I don't really want to wait that long. So like, if you get a cancellation, I can be here in 30 minutes. And he was like, dope. And then what happens? He calls me and he's like, I actually got a cancellation this afternoon. Do you want to come in? It was Mm. a week early. And I was like, hell yeah, I'll come in. And I got there in 20 minutes. (laughs) He's like, hey, I'm gonna take this window. I'm gonna take this because window he, when I can. You know, he had already sent me the design, so I already knew like, what I'm I was like, gonna yeah. get. Like, so if you don't have a relationship with your tattoo artist, like the time to build that is from the time you reach out. Like mm-hmm. when you're like, I saw your work and this is why I'm reaching out to you, that's when you start your rapport so that mm-hmm. you feel comfortable because they're about to scar your body. So you need to make sure that they're gonna scar your body the way you want it to be scarred. Right. I tell you, TikTok will have you down a rabbit hole, but and you got you caring about shit you don't. Why would you care about? And what? <laughs> Just stay hydrated, okay? But y'all, we gonna wrap this up. Um, Charmaine, thank you for being here. It's like one let we was, it was supposed to be last week, but Stephanie's brain was so fried, still kind of is. But it was so fried. <laughs> I'm just like I needed to turn it off and watch literally every the dumbest DC. thing you could probably like do. i was let's say i watched <laughs> justice league justice league unlimited batman batman beyond superman oh, and, like literally all the animated stuff um the batman yeah i watched a lot of different stuff and i also That's did a, a lot of sleeping because my brain is just yeah it has a yeah. tough time just all that. so we were supposed to do this last week but um thank if you, you got for being some time here. in you to come to medita you could just sleep I can't wait. To, I was so like, just tell my mother. She was like, oh, like oh. Excuse me. You can just come here and sleep, and then you can sit in the pool, and then you can hang out in the hammock and just sleep. <laughs> Be so good. Oh, an actual like place where it's like I could take an afternoon nap during the day. During the listen, day. I will get out of the pool and air dry in my hammock, and like. I think I'm just going to sit here for 20 minutes or something. And then like 75 minutes goes by and my feet are starting to hurt because I didn't put lotion on because I air dried. I just straight up. Oh my <laughs> word. Um, <laughs> take naps. But take right, naps. Please tell everybody how they can file for main hustle media conglomerate. <laughs> uh you can follow me on the instagrams at the blasian blurred that's d-a-b-l-a-s-i-a-n-b-l-e-r-d as in black nerd blasian black you know blasian nerd whatever uh you can also follow my podcast militantly mixed at militantly mixed blurred comics as in b-l-e-r-d-c-o-m-i-x-e-d because we're both a couple of mixed black blurds yeah. and my other show queer and far which is a travel podcast for marginalized travelers black brown queer disabled what have you um i'm also going to start kind of a personal journey little show which will be in in uh not consistent but fun is Manny in medida charting my little experiences living here in medida mexico uh so that'll be i'm working on that i got some recordings to do next week and hopefully i'll get that out by the end of the month um and yeah that's that's where you find me this is so (laughs) exciting um y'all this has been a mocha man's podcast thank you so much for listening um if you can spare some time say if you are a praying person if you're someone who likes to give good energy please give your love and your energy and your prayers to the family of ajika owens who was literally shot by a neighbor didn't even open the door oh this is the florida she Mm -hmm. now is her four children are without their mother because she was a single Mm -hmm. mother um the murderer is arrested Mm mm-hmm she just got arrested. Just got arrested. Um, ben Crump is now her lawyer. So you know how okay, this is going to go. Al yeah. Sharpton is doing a eulogy. Her funeral is this upcoming Monday. She did the absolute right thing when a mean ass white lady that lives in her neighborhood took her child's iPad. Mm. And she went to go get it back. But now you have a nine-year-old little boy who now feels guilty mm-hmm. because he feels like this is his fault 
because he told his mother that this lady took his iPad, which is what we tell children to do. Mm -hmm. You don't need to fight with no adult. You bring it to me. Not take care of it. Yeah. And it's like, that is the most weirdest thing I've ever seen. And it's like, you didn't open the door. You if shot you her through the door. So you weren't even, iPod it's you like stole. you were not standing your ground. You were not defending yourself. You knew you took that little boy's iPad. So I hope that where you're going, that lady, um, you deserve everything that's coming to you. Mm -hmm. And I feel so bad for those children. And that yeah. nice little boy, baby, this is not your fault. And hopefully they have a therapy support system around these kids. Cause please. Cause I can only imagine what it was. If you I'm like that little boy's yeah. nine and He's his mother feel, was gone. He's going to feel unearned guilt for his whole life. A very long time. People don't take care of him. Yeah. Yeah. So please send mm. any energy that you have any good energy because the world is a very scary place if you're black and brown mm -hmm. because literally Florida this didn't just right happen yeah you cannot be black or brown you cannot be an immigrant you cannot be gay or lgbtq plus in florida literally where is bugs bunny you can't saw, read a book can't read a book that nice young lady who is a poet laureate who was at the inauguration Amanda Gorman had her book banned. I'm like, okay. The crazy thing about this this stuff too is that for every big move like that that they make, the community comes through. And so like mm -hmm. her book actually did blow up as a result. They're like, but wait a minute, she a has a book. State. Yeah. But there's like a whole state of children and adults that aren't gonna have access to it because of some nonsense. Like come on yeah. man you're like oh it's dangerous i'm like yeah south africa did the same thing for apartheid mm -hmm. name us one time in history where book banning happened on the good side the quote good side didn't didn't, of didn't um thanks mr hitler do that too yeah nazis did it y'all the it's never a good Italian thing to ban a book there's <sighs> never a good reason to ban the book Especially when you look at what books they're banning. Pay attention when people mind don't comps, want you to like, be oh, educated. Okay. It's like mind comp, like oh okay, well, <laughs> okay. White supremacist literature, yeah. Literally saying I'm brown, I mean, you should love your uh, all little boys. Not aren't putting blue. it in a school, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but the thing is that book is still available and accessible in the world. Like you go to a library, like there things like that, like. You can yeah. get the information for you education purposes. You can get it from a library because they always oh, only in school libraries. I'm like, I remember as a child, I don't it remember going to my school library. School. <laughs> right, I was like, I was usually going to the public library. You know, um, Push by Sapphire. I read that when mm -hmm. I was in middle school. Invisible mm -hmm. Life by Elin Harris, middle school. Mm -hmm. It's like it was like no one stopped me from doing it. And guys, I think I'm a better person for reading said books. I mean, I'm just saying. Mm. Y'all, I will be back. Um, I'm saying this on the mic because I got to say this to remind myself. I got to get old man Wade back because we really are overdue to talk about X-Men. Probably going to talk about <laughs> Justice League too. Oh yeah, because you kind of started something and then... Yeah, and it was like, I got to get this shit together because X-Men is like one of the overdue things. And the problem is the live action movies make us so tired. <laughs> They're a guilty pleasure, though. Sometimes you just want to watch really it, just are. be mad, like, at just mad. Want to go upstairs and watch X two right now? That opening scene with Nightcrawler is like a public <laughs> cleanser. Maybe I'll finish <laughs> the Snyder cut of Justice League because I'm like, I can't believe you're getting yourself through that. Cannot but wait. I gotta tell Kendrick. I'm like, I'm three quarters of the way through, and I'm like, wait, because he when he said it, he said it doesn't feel like four hours, and I'm like. It's the wildest part about that i'm like how doesn't it it's taken you three days to get to that far well i did watch so i started it so here's the problem i started it last what night happened? and then what well, i know what happened was <laughs> i then today it's like i'm at work all day so it's like i just mm -hmm. let it i like propped up my phone and let it play and it was just like i'm just working like what? wait what what was that paying attention because i also 
like I, like if I was in a the movie theater, I'd be like, I gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta get up. But when yeah, when I'm working, it's kind of like you're in a zone. It's like also if you release a four hour movie into the theater, you do need to build an inter- intermission just like a play, because no one's sitting there for four hours. Yeah, it's like it's bad enough when you're just like three hours. You're like, look, three hours for a Marvel movie is like that's enough. We'll do it. Just saying, we'll do it. So I was like, what's an extra hour? I'm like, it's different when you're home. Yeah, when you're at home, you just watch it at your own pace and shit like that. I yeah, mean, like, like okay. obviously, we can binge a fucking 10-episode season on Netflix in a day, no problem, and you don't feel the length of it. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, because I start, also get started the, the Arnold docu-series as well. I'm like, wait, Arnold has a show. Oh, okay. I Fubar. think I want to start watching that. Right, I'm, a, I'm on the first episode. I'm like, this is actually kind of interesting, but I also like hearing Arnold talk. Yeah, Arnold's a kind of conservative Republican. You ruined my that, state. Right. It's like, see, that's the thing. When it comes to conservative Republicans, Arnold is the Republican that y'all think y'all are. You're not. He's talking about redlining. Y'all don't. Yeah. But y'all, that's a yeah. hold up and ding. So I guess that means you have to speak it to me. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't hear any of that. Oh my gosh, you keep I, disappearing. Oh, him. That means you have to come back, so we can talk about Arnold. <laughs> See, <laughs> she's like, "Wait, what?" It's like, "Yep," because I'm on. Um, I think I first the first episode. I thought it was just a do- like a movie. I didn't know mm. it was a show. I'm like, it's a whole show. Like he got the right. the food bar show. I'm like, did you? Well, he's got a big deal at Netflix now. He's their chief oh, he action. Yeah, he's got a job. He's their chief action operator. Uh, uh, operator. Okay, so now that makes sense because I was like, yeah. we got a docu series, we got food bar. Yeah, like- he's got a multi. He's got a multi thing deal at Netflix right now. That probably is going to work because generally, I like Arnold stuff. Generally, like seriously, I love End of Days, and I have no idea why. I just need him to not be in politics and do what he did to my state, which is already too late because he already did it to my state. Yeah. But you know, like when he's not, the governor, not, not to be like, all shut up and dribble, but at the same time, like get into the like act, go act. Like, can you go do the acting now? Do go not play do yourself politics. in a movie. Go do you that. Talking about political issues, just baby, we remember what happened. Well, some yeah. of us remember well, what look, happened like, in California. I mean, I like how he was hitting it in Asterisk 45. I like how he can show Republicans like there's aspects of being how you can be a decent Republican. I mean, he All still right. fucked some shit up, but mm-hmm. he's got some decent ideas about like the humanity points. of people and shit like that, for sure, for sure. Yeah, because you can be fiscal. A lot of people like, a lot of black people are fiscally conservative. It's like, believe- term. right. It's kind of like, it's like, it's weird to say I'm like, you're financially conservative. It's like, the only reason why you're not more openly saying I'm a Republican is because there's so much racism. I'm like, hey, hi. There's racism on the on on the liberal <laughs> side, too. Liberal. For real. For real. You know, you know, I got Cornell West saying he's going to run for president. I'm like, yep. That's enough internet for me. That's enough <laughs> internet for me. I'm gonna go find That's some good. dancing videos, watch some that. cartoons, go watch Steven Universe again from watch the beginning. Some, watch some tattoo talk. <laughs> uh-huh. Water talk. Or watching cake decorating as they read Am I the Assholes from Reddit. That's my other favorite uh, thing to hilarious. do. Hilarious. Like, I know you love Am I the Assholes, but the idea of just putting it on top of just an innocuous activity of some like, sort. It's like some like one like like one of those things where they jump around and chase coins. I like that one. But I most definitely like the one where they're decorating the cake. I'm like, that's funny. Why am I I've just seen watching the Chase this? coins ones? Those are funny. Yeah. Also, I'm like, why are you putting so much fruit in cake? Fruit? Why? They were like, or decorating cakes where they're putting like buttercream, but then putting either maybe crushed up cookies or jelly fruit. And I'm like, it's <laughs> just gross. Okay, y'all. That's funny. Okay, we're leaving for real. We're going for real, for real. <laughs> Guys, I will be back next week. Bye. Bye.